The Omicron-fueled COVID wave is adding another complication to the economy that is already taxed by inflation and supply chain disruptions. The U.S. Census Bureau estimates nearly 9 million Americans missed work in early January due to caring for someone with COVID symptoms or being ill with the virus themselves. A survey conducted by Harvard's Kennedy School of Government indicates nearly two-thirds of sick workers say they worked through their illness. I want to bring in now Joshua Hausman. He's an associate professor of public policy and, econ and economics at the University of Michigan. And Josh is also a research associate at the National Bureau of Economic Research. Josh, good to have you here. So from an economic standpoint, who's felt the effects of the Omicron surge the most? That's a great question. Um, I think, first of all, you have to say that the, the people who felt the health effects the most are, are those who are unvaccinated and then also those who, who ha have to work in person are, are more exposed to the virus. Economically, I think we're seeing a lot of disruptions in some industries like airlines, also in, in places like schools where they're, they're short on staff. So those are also industries where uh, workers are, are certainly experiencing difficulties. And then, of course, as, as you're showing here, the, um, the healthcare sector is one where there is uh, obviously enormous difficulties in close to overwhelmed hospitals. And do we have any data about employees infected with COVID still coming to work and potentially infecting others? I'm sure many of our viewers hearing those statistics are concerned about that. Yes. Well, you just cited the, those statistics, which were very striking, that I think you said two-thirds of workers reported coming to, to work when they were sick, uh, which is obviously distressing. And I, I'm sure that the virus is being transmitted in, in workplaces. It, it seems uh, almost almost inevitable. One certainly hopes that, that workers are, are staying home when they're sick, but given just the, the sheer volume of, of infections, the numbers who may be uh, asymptomatic or mild or may face uh, enormous economic pressures to go to work given uh, lack of sick leave, um, it, it's certainly not surprising that many workers would be showing up sick. So you mentioned sick leave. Tell us how paid sick leave factors into this. Well, clearly, you would like workers to be in a situation where they don't have to choose between their income and their job and uh, protecting uh, others from, from the virus and being able to stay home themselves to recover. So ideally, that, that is what paid sick leave does. Paid sick leave is important. Even, even absent uh, the coronavirus, you, you would like people to be able to do that with, with just ordinary sicknesses. Um, but obviously, that, that's very much highlighted right now. I wanted to share with our viewers uh, something that was also very striking. Your article in The Atlantic in which you wrote, quote, pandemic related disruptions to the economy may well last four years rather than months. Tell us why that might be. Uh, yeah, so thank you for highlighting that. I mean, to be clear, I, I have no, no crystal ball and I, I would like nothing more than to be sure. wrong about that. My my fear is that, as we've seen, I, I'm no epidemiologist, but it looks like this virus uh, mutates fairly easily, and I, I don't know that there's a good reason to think that this is the the last of, of the variants that we'll see. So there's that. There's also just that I, I think it's going to be difficult, um, perhaps with good reason, for society to, to learn to live with the virus, even if we don't see quite the, the surges that we're seeing now. Uh, things like borders, um, it, it's hard to foresee those sort of uh, normalizing or going back to 2019 where you could just, you know, get on a plane without a, a test and, you know, go go to any country, um, not least uh, China being a very important trading partner from the U.S. Uh, it's really not clear when uh, travel uh, and the economic relation between the, the U.S. and, and China uh, will will normalize to its pre-pandemic normal. The the other area where I worry about that is with uh, schools and childcare. I, I see you're you're showing that right now. Um, you know, with uh, with very good reason right now that you know kids stay home when they're sick, uh, and uh, one, one can debate how how reasonable a lot of the quarantine restrictions on kids are right now. But they're they're very much disrupting childcare. Childcare and schools are are not operating normally. Uh, I think it's going to be a long time uh, before they they get back to to what looks like uh, normal. Well, and obviously inflation is a major concern for people, being up to the highest rate it's been in 40 years. It's, it's also been a pressing concern for the Biden administration. Uh, how could the pandemic complicate the rising price of consumer goods, Josh? 
Well, the pandemic has done a lot of things that I think have contributed to inflation. So one is it has shifted demand from services to goods. So people, uh, they, they don't want to go out to eat, so they buy equipment so they can cook better meals at home. Or they, they don't want to go see a movie in the movie theater, so they, they buy a better TV. Uh, or they're, they're working from home, so they want uh, various, uh, you know, a, a new desk or a, a bigger house. And so all that has shifted demand to goods from services. And what we've seen is that the goods sector, more goods are being provided, um, but it hasn't been able to keep up. And so we're also seeing much higher prices there. And that, that's one reason why one sees inflation. The other is sort of on the, the supply side, the labor force has shrunk a lot from its pre-pandemic level. And uh, a lot of that is, is because of the pandemic, uh, especially older workers have retired. That may be because they, uh, they in part are, are worried about risks, uh, thing, things like we, we talked about earlier, catching COVID on the job. Uh, there's also been a, a decline of, of women in the labor force, uh, which may be in part uh, reflecting the, the difficulties with childcare and schooling right now. So I th there's debate among this among economists on how much impact uh, the pandemic has on inflation, but, but I'm someone who, who thinks it's very much contributed to higher inflation. All right, Joshua Hausman, thank you. Thank you.